Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss and internet shitlords. And look what I got. I can't believe it. In what what is nothing short of a miracle, <laughs> my copy of the Old School Companion 2, uh, Medieval Authentic Adventures, has uh, has suddenly arrived, like, way faster than I had ever expected it to. And uh, take a look at it, how cool it looks side by side with the Old School Companion 1. Like, just fantastic. So, <laughs> obviously today, I'm going to just do a, a quick flip through of it and, and tell you a little bit about what's in it. Mostly I'm going to talk a little bit about the adventures, I guess. So, uh, you know, uh, if you're curious about what you can expect in it, check it out because, uh, this is, uh, an informative video and, uh, yeah, it, it's a little bit of an infomercial, I guess, but, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll find it useful in some way. <laughs> so this is the old, old school companion two, And just like the old school companion one, it's a compilation volume of a number of the RPG Pundit Presents issues. Old School Companion 1 has about half of the RPG Pundit Presents medieval authentic sourcebook stuff, right? So in here you have um, material on, you know, character classes, special rules, spellbooks and grimoires, astrology, medieval life and activities, and the supernatural. So a lot of very good stuff. Uh, Old School Companion 2 is a compilation of all of the, uh, up to the current date, all of the medieval authentic adventures. So it's uh, 320 pages long. And uh, it's got, uh, you know, it's compatible with the Lion and Dragon RPG or any other OSR fantasy game. And it has 26 adventures in it. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good value, you know, <laughs> like skip candle keep by the old school companion too. And all of the adventures are, are done in the medieval authentic style, which is to say that they're based on actual medieval history, medieval lore, medieval mythology, um, all of that sort of thing. A lot of them are based on sort of actual stories from the middle ages or variations of those stories. And, uh, but it's, it's relatively easy for most of them that you could like convert them, right? Like there's some of them, you know, there, there's some that happen say in London or in York and you could put them in any of the larger cities of your fantasy world, right? The thing about medieval authentic fantasy is that you can, it's very easy to convert to medieval fantasy, right? Sometimes it's not as easy to convert the other way around. If you have an adventure for say Greyhawk or the Forgotten Realms, and you want to convert it into a medieval authentic um, adventure for for Lion and Dragon or for Dark Albion or something like that. It requires that you strip it of a whole bunch of the stuff that isn't medieval authentic. But if you've got a medieval authentic adventure, because those settings and most D and D type settings are are at least inspired by Western medieval um, Western medieval society you can you can easily incorporate them and you know it's it's it can happen an adventure it happens in london could happen in greyhawk or in waterdeep or whatever um with uh, relatively little variation being necessary so it's it's totally compatible in that sense the first page you get a couple of details there things on how to do you know skill checks and on how currencies work in the in the lion and dragon system but uh, a lot of the adventures will have in the sec any time that any treasure is mentioned in terms of monetary value, it, I'll put there. You know, this is whatever. It's it's X number of pounds, which equi which is equivalent to a hundred, like five pounds, which is about a hundred gold pieces or something like that, right? So in in terms of um, of converting it to the standard D and D currency, um, and so the RPG Pundit present series had a whole bunch of these adventures and they, they have a wide variety of power levels and of um, challenge ratings, I guess you could say, which I don't list. Right. But um, sometimes in the introduction, I mentioned this is an adventure that is probably um, better for high level characters, or this is an adventure that is uh, defaulted to beginning characters and if you want to make it tougher you can that sort of thing right so to give you some examples we have here the child eaters which is an adventure about um in a wilderland area you have um 
a couple of villages that have a feud and one of the villages is accused or believed by the other to be engaging in a secret ancient cult, uh, an ancient pagan cult. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, you can see that, that the production value of the book is quite nice, right? You've got it. It's a soft cover. It's a small, so, smaller size book, like similar in size to the Lamentations of the Flame Princess books. Um, for you to just to give you a comparison, it's got uh, really nice covers, very nice border designs. It's not incredibly fancy, but it's uh, it's definitely uh, not bare bones. Secret Order of the Red Lady. That's an adventure about a um, a magical secret society that is uh, that is sinister and has infiltrated the local. Um, upper classes in a in a country area um but there's a, a bit of a twist to that adventure i can't really tell you what it is without <laughs> without revealing it but it's uh it's a very interesting kind of adventure in the when you when you find out what the twist is um the hunters that's an adventure about um a relatively isolated area where you have um some strange disappearances going on and it's an area that is known to have had legends of certain monsters and also of elf encounters. But uh, there's also a famous adventurer that lives in the area who is, who's gotten some renown for being a monster hunter and is rumored to have a menagerie of monsters in his estate. Um, so there's a number of possible suspects, basically, and the PCs have to kind of figure out who's really responsible for it. Um, chapter 4, Hecate's Tomb. This is a... Um, a dungeon crawl adventure, and there are some dungeon crawl adventures in, in the medieval authentic realm, right? Um, which involves a, um, a back lane sort of trail leading to London. So it's not too far from the big city, but it's, it's outside of it where um, merchants and people passing through have disappeared. And uh, if the player characters just happen to be passing through or are sent to investigate, they end up uncovering that uh, there's a, um, a, a a magical reason for it, and that leads to the discovery of, of an ancient tomb complex that has a lot of potential dangers. Um, there you go, there's a dungeon. <laughs> Uh, chapter five, the Midnight Dew. This is a fairly high level adventure involving a, um, an area that was north of Hadrian's Wall in the border area between England and Scotland, where the, it was, it was kind of a lawless area, right? Like local bandit kings would take up power and whatnot. And, and in this adventure, there's, um, a powerful figure that has that has gotten there and is starting to take over the whole region, and the rumors are that he is, you know, uh, aligned with um, demonic forces, and the player characters have to go and stop him. Um, and it's a pretty tough adventure. Assault on Yaxley Manor is an adventure that is set in an area that is blocked off by a, by a snowstorm. So there's elements of it of man versus nature. But then when in that area, you have an, an aging local uh, knight, you know, local lord of the region, um, who, whose manor is under siege by a group of bandits. And the player characters have to figure out what they're going to do about that. And it's, a, it's an adventure that doesn't have any significant magical or supernatural elements which makes it kind of interesting too right because it's uh it's just you know people doing bad things <laughs> tower of the mad astrologer that's a another higher level adventure that is set in um in the hills of of wales where at that point in time there were still a lot of you know groups of uh, and areas that were um in resistance let's say to english rule and every once in a while you'd get somebody like you know in historical context like the legendary o england dower who rose up and caused a rebellion in wales and and caused a whole lot of trouble 
And uh, in, in this adventure, there's a group of these Welsh hill folk that have united um, under the aid of a Welsh magician who has an incredibly sophisticated tower that he's built by supernatural means. Um, so it's it's not a dungeon crawl exactly, but it is a a castle uh, a, a castle break in, I guess you could say, a heist um, where there's also some really weird magic going on both in the area and from the main opponent. Um, the Dragon's Egg. That's an adventure set set in London, where um, different uh, feuding houses in the case of the adventure the default is you know it's the war of the roses right so it's the lancastrians and the yorks um are are in conflict and there's a group of um not very trustworthy let's say urban rogues who have contacted a, a nobleman from one of these camps saying that they have a, a dragon's egg and a a ritual that would bring that would make the egg hatch, and uh, given that dragons have not been seen uh, for for several centuries in the Dark Albion setting, you know, having a one side having a pet dragon would certainly be something that could change the the course of the war. Um, but of course, there are some twists and turns. You don't know if the if the people involved are are actually pulling a scam. And if they aren't, you don't know where and how they got it. And there's some adventuring in it that takes place in the sewers beneath uh, beneath London, or more more aptly in the, I guess you could say the catacombs, because they weren't really sewers. Um, and some a supernatural enemy too. The Lady Stone. Uh, this is an adventure for I guess you could say mid level characters probably. That has to do, again, with a pair of feuding villages. There's a lot of stories in the Middle Ages of, like, villages that are really close to each other that hate each other. <laughs> and so North and South Luffenham are one example of that. And uh, they have, you know, a spat that has been building up with greater and greater tension until they have a kind of mini battle on a bridge between the two towns. Um, and the player characters are sent there to try to, like, bring bring peace and order to the situation or to negotiate or whatever. But... Uh, it turns out that there's actually an ancient um, magical stone of the sort that you see a lot in, in certainly in England, um, that is actually exerting an, uh, a malignant influence that is threatening to plunge the whole area into bloodshed. So uh, that's a kind of investigative adventure. The Thing from the Cave is an adventure that is set in the Dartmoor in Devonshire, a, a kind of border region. Um, where there's the the setup is that the player characters find out about um, a bandit uh, a bandit leader you could say that according to the the rumors that they've he heard is uh, using magical monsters or demons or things like that now to attack and raid the villages and he can't be stopped. Um, it as it turns out there is also a twist there. Um, but there is definitely a supernatural danger involved, and the player characters have to figure out what it is and stop it. The Defilers, that's uh, an adventure involving some naughty priests, <laughs> which is a very, very common thing in the Middle Ages, right? Priests and monks were infamous for all kinds of bad behavior, not the least of which is that they were like kind of number one on the top list of most likely to engage in demon summoning or witchcraft, right? Like, because they had a lot of time on their hands and they could read, you know, so they had, they were the ones that got into the grimoires. And this is a an adventure where basically you have a pair of, of uh, magician monks that are um, fiddling around with demons. And also it involves a kind of country town conflict between the the nearby city and the local merchants outside of that city um, that uh, get involved in uh, the events related to the the aforementioned demon summoning um, the reavers that's uh, an adventure going on again in the border area with Scotland where it it has to do with a plan by a Scottish uh, chief or prince or what have you um, to try to recapture the city of Berwick 
which is a city that had flipped hands many times during the, the history of the Middle Ages. And uh, there's what appears to be a supernatural element to it, um, though I, I guess I can tell you that that is actually kind of secondary to the plot in, in most ways. Um, but uh, basically the player characters have to try to stop a Scottish invasion before it starts. The Kimry Davy is uh, an adventure that is directly taken out of a folk song poem from the Middle Ages, and it has to do with a, um, a young lady who is uh, married to a, to a small-time lord, uh, and uh, yet she gets seduced by a, a, a gypsy, basically, um, who runs away with her, and the, the player characters have to try to find her and, uh, and bring her back <laughs> because she's run off. Um, but, of course, there are some twists and turns in that one as well. And uh, there's a lot of kind of wilderness travel involved in the adventure because you're trying to track these people down. Um, the Demons of Croyland, also based on a medieval legend, uh, has to do with a um, isolated village that is near to an abbey. And the saint that founded that abbey was said to have been a great opponent of demons. And uh, it turns out that his... Uh, his tomb is being used for him to fight from beyond the grave to hold back demonic forces, except that some a dangerous elf maid has now come along trying to cause some trouble there, and that's uh, where the player characters have to intervene to stop total chaos from ensuing. The Cave of the Hawk is an adventure that um, takes place in a in a town where there's been some um, conflict between the, the people of the village and the new priest who they feel is excessively um, strict in his, uh, in his policies. And uh, it seems at first to be a pretty straightforward kind of, you got to try to negotiate between the, the people and the, and the clergy, which is again, a thing that didn't, that, that did tend to happen with some frequency in, in the middle ages. Um, but, uh, it turns out that there's actually a secret involved and a cave and a, uh, an ancient god. So <laughs> there's some, some elements of magic to that. Uh, the Elven Tomb is an adventure that takes place, um, around, um, it, it takes place in, in an area in the borders of Sherwood, Sherwood Forest, and it involves a, a magician who lived who died or disappeared long ago, uh, but that documents that he have have surfaced now that indicate that he had found a uh, an ancient elven tomb that has uh, potentially great valuables. So it, it's a dungeon crawl adventure. I mean, it, it's an overland and dungeon crawl adventure because you have to find the tomb first and then negotiate your way through it. And there's also some bandits involved and other things like that. Um, Tamlane is another famous, famous folk song slash poem from the Middle Ages that I've converted into an adventure here. And it has to do with this kind of uh, elven, how would you put it, Cas an elven Casanova that is, uh, that's shown up in an area and is going around trying to take the virginity of all the, <laughs> all the local women. And the daughter of an aging but once uh, famous and very influential knight has uh, run off, apparently, and disappeared with this elf. And, of course, the player characters have to go and save her. But there's also a twist, because, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the, the story of Tamlin, um, there's, it, there's a problem involving the Queen of the Elves, the Wild Hunt, and uh, a pact with the forces of hell. So <laughs> uh, it gets very complicated for the player characters. Um, though it technically a low level party can handle it. They just aren't going to handle it by, by killing a bunch of really powerful monsters. <laughs> They're going to have to figure out a smarter way to handle it, you know, and there are smarter ways to handle it. Um, after that, we get to a section called the cult killer antagonist, which was, I had a series of RPG Pundit presents issues that each had, I think usually three adventures that were slightly shorter adventures, but that focused on a specific, um, kind of murder or serial serial killer or criminal 
that also had supernatural elements. So all of these adventures, that there's nine of them, are um, connected to that theme. And so you get um, different groups of, or individuals, individuals or families or groups that are conducting terrible um, and dangerous acts of witchcraft, murder, and, uh, and demon worship and things like that. And almost all of them are investigative adventures. And almost all of them also happen in a specific place where the adventure also gives you information about the place, right? So um, that makes it kind of interesting in that, that uh, it outlines some of, some of the areas that are, you know, if you're playing in Dark Albion, it gives you more detail about specific regions of the, uh, of the uh, campaign world, right? Um, so you've got a you know a werewolf type story in there. You've got uh, a sect that has been eating people. You, know? um, you have uh, a cult of the death god. Um, you have a, a a story about a a surgeon who has uh, um, has been using human sacrifice to bring back to manifestation the ghost of his dead beloved wife so some very interesting stuff you get even a map of Ipswich there um, and uh, these are all uh, adventures that are uh, they're only a little bit shorter than the than the other the main adventures of the book so um, even these ones will you know a lot of them you might be able to do them in one session but you might need two or three maybe depending um, I guess it depends on how long your, your sessions are too. You got a good old fashioned ax murderer, <laughs> except that you got to figure out which of the various suspects is the ax murderer. Uh, the hand of Nero. Uh, this is a, a, a cult that is taking place in the city of York. So you get more information about York and some of its very unusual medieval traditions. Um, so you know, a lot of really good stuff here in terms of setting material, and obviously the adventures are good. A lot of them are investigative, but some of them aren't. Some of them are fighting. Most of the, these ones are investigative because, you know, you got to figure out who the killers are or who the, 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 where the sect is. Um, but, you know, the earlier ones that, that are at the front of the book um, have a variety of, like, uh, investigation, espionage, um, combat dungeon crawls so you know you've got a lot of material in this book that you can use for a lot of adventures or that you can modify for your own adventures and uh, i think it's a pretty good grab you could get the old school companion 2 uh medieval authentic adventures uh, on drive through rpg the link will obviously be in the description below and uh if you haven't checked it out check out the old school companion 1 too and lion and dragon obviously but you don't need those to, to use these if you're an OSR gamer. You can use them with any OSR system, really. Um, of course, Lion and Dragon is ideal, so I don't know why you wouldn't get it. Right? <laughs> Anyways, if you like this video, uh, please uh, like it, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, be sure to check this out. Now if, now, if Medieval Authentic isn't your thing, you should also check out my other books like World of the, La of the Last Sun, which is just about the opposite of Medieval Authentic. It's gonzo gaming with weird fantasy. And, uh, you know, my individual issues, I mean, maybe maybe listening through this, you're not totally convinced you want to get the whole book, but, you you know, all of these adventures are also available individually as RPG Pundit Presents issues. So you could get them that way if you want. Um, but it's nice to have a physical book, right? Because uh, RPG Pundit Presents are usually PDF only until we get these books out. So uh, be sure to check that out, and uh, thank you for listening. Currently smoking, Castello 4K Canadian plus uh, Argento Latakia.